everybody. Welcome back to Snorkel.tv. I'm Carl Schuf, and I'm going to be continuing my walkthrough of the introduction to Tween Max. In a previous video, uh, we talked about what Tween Max is, what it can do, and how you can get it, and how you can basically implement it into your flash files. If you haven't seen that video, please visit www.snorkel.tv and check it out. So, what we want to focus on here is converting an existing timeline based animation to a programmatically tweened animation using the tween max set of action script files and right now let's just get right to the timeline version where we have three different text symbols animating in um, they're doing a slight de blur as they're sliding across the stage now this is great it works and it took me like five seconds to set up the only problem with it is that when it comes to editing it, it's really problematic. And whenever you're building flash work, whether it's for a client or for your boss, someone's always going to say, make it slower, make it faster, put more time in here, blah, blah, blah. And right now, if I wanted to make each of these tweens quicker, I would have to, in three different places, do a little shift F5 and remove frames to shorten the length of those tweens. On the other hand, if I wanted to make the tweens longer, again, F5 a bunch of times to lengthen them. Every time I'm making a change, I have to do it three times. If we wanted to space out the amount of time in between each item coming in, I would have to select a tween span and then slide it over, and I could be doing this five or 20 times, depending on how many items are animating. Um, if somebody says, oh, have there be some more overlap um, I would have to drag everything back and it would just, you know, over time it just becomes a real pain in the neck. So what we're going to do is show you how to build a staggered animation using Tween Max um, where we can change things like the time and the delay between each tween very, very easily. So let's just see what the finished thing is right now. Um, you'll see all three things sliding in, one after each other. Okay. Let's jump over to my start file here. Thank you, mighty crap mouse. And you will see that we have new game MC, options MC, and credits MC. So we have three symbols all in just one nice, neat little layer in one keyframe. Let's go over to my tween max tween builder, here this basic Swift that we get when we download the Greensoft AS3 tweening platform. And I just want to generate some code for moving something from left to right. Now for this demo I want to be very careful that I choose tween max. Tween light is the basic version. Um, tween max gives us the ability to tween filters. So I'm going to use tween max because it's more powerful. And here we have all the code that we need. Let me just do a quick, well, before I do that, let's do a quick tween. And you'll see that this guy is tweening to an X value of 65. All right, let's also add some easing. Why am I in such a rush? Uh, let's do a back ease out. And what that means is that the object will go beyond the target and then move back to the target. And here you go. So you'll see that it overshoots the target and then it goes back to where it should be. So we're just going to take that stock code there, we're going to copy it out, I'm going to go into my file, and in frame one of the actions layer, I'm going to paste it in. First two lines pretty much make this swift accessible to all of the action script needed for moving stuff around. And now we have tween max 2, meaning that we will move from where an existing symbol is to a new position. So let's take MC, which is what we is the first parameter, which is the name of the instance, the instance name of the clip we're going to move. Excuse me. And let's just do a test here. So now you'll see that that first symbol there is moving from wherever it was on the stage to the value that I suggested. But what I'm going to do is flip this around a little bit. Instead of tweening to a specific place, I'm going to use tween from. And this gives me 
a really great addition to my workflow because what I can do in Flash is set up my keyframes the way I want them to resolve and then I can use Tween Max to get them to where they should be from any position. And this is going to be really cool. I'm just going to say, let's bring you in from a position of negative 300. And so now, new game slides in from off stage. Really cool. So I can lay everything out in Flash exactly as I want it to end up and then use my tweens to introduce them. Now let's also talk about adding a little de-blur action here. I'm going to go back to my finder where I have my plugin explorer. I'm just going to crack this puppy open and we're going to use the blur filter. So we'll click on example and this swift that uh, Jack Doyle gives us here is just so cool because I'm not even really thinking about what I'm doing. And let's just say we want to blur a value of 20. Hit tween and then it gets blurry. We can crank that up a little bit. You know, I'm probably going to stick with something around 80. I'm going to start out really extremely blurred. And then this is the code that says apply a blur filter with a value of 80 to the x-axis. And I want to just copy in what I have selected there, copy it, go to flash, and then right next to where I specify the x value that I'm tweening from, I'm going to paste in my new blur value. And so here we test out and now you'll see that that text is deblurring. If you can't see the deblur, well it's very easy for me to change the second parameter which is the amount of time. Let's make this take four seconds so we can all see that that text is definitely starting blurry and it ends up crystal clear. Test again, super blurry, super legible. Nice. Well, I don't need my tween to be that long, so let's just bring it down to one second. Now I need to animate everything else, so check this out. I'm just going to copy one line of code here, bang it in there two times, and just add the proper instance names for the following symbols, options MC and also credits MC. And so now each one of them comes in with the same exact effect applied, but they're happening all at the same time. There's no stagger going on. Well, what I can do is delay each tween as well. Check this out. After I specify the ease, I'm going to say delay by 0.5 seconds, and the next one is going to be a delay of one second. So now you'll see that we have our stagger. All right, there we go. Now that this is in place, if somebody says, I want the tweens to be a little bit longer, well, we just change around a number. And we can store these numbers in variables so that it's very easy to update. I'm still making three changes. We'll show you some ways of simplifying this workflow. But now, I didn't have to add a bunch of frames, but I've made each tween much longer. Again, it's a much quicker way of updating. If I want to be, have more time in between each tween, I can just change the delay. And here, instead of saying 0.5, maybe I'll say it's going to be 1 second and then 2 seconds. So now we've really slowed it down. But again, I'm not monkeying with the timeline at all. It's extremely flexible. Now, what I'm going to do in the next exercise is show you how I can take this and literally tween 5 or 20 symbols with a stagger with literally two lines of code. Um, it's going to be sick. So check out the next video on using all from where one line of code can tween multiple movie clips. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you soon.